acknowledge the upcoming Jewish holiday of um, Tu B'Shvat, which is um, the uh, Rosh Hashanah Ila no, New Beginnings. Let's all hope this brings us some new beginnings and that you get to spend an hour with us uh, having some fun and hopefully creating some really nice artwork that you could share with a friend or, or for yourself. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, a board of director member, Connie Kadish, who also happens to be a native Teenecker, um, coincidentally living on the same block as Dina Levy. We don't choose our um, intros uh, uh, according to how the, their uh, proximity to the to the host and to uh, and to the Amit, uh, Amit uh, uh, I would say it, staff. But uh, Connie um, will tell us a little bit about Amit, introduce Dina, and then we will get started. And of course, if anyone will have questions, this is going to be a little bit of a different format, which I'll explain before Deb, uh, Dina gets on. Good morning, everybody. So first of all. Disclaimer, I am not a native Teenecker. However, I do live two doors away from Dina and she's a wonderful neighbor. But before I talk about Dina, let's talk about Amit. Amit has over 41,000 students and 106 schools. 70% of our students come from impoverished or development areas, kids who really need that extra help. Um, we have programs that are all over the gamut. We have a lot of Ethiopian students. We have a lot of um, other students that from the former Soviet Union that all over the place. We have students who are from areas of higher income and have you know the higher classes, but the 70% are the kids who really need us. We do STEM work, we do artwork, we do mechanics. These kids become, they graduate and become productive members of Israeli society. They have over 90%, uh, no, excuse me, 97% of, um, of the AMIT graduates go with the IDF or National Service. And 10% of the IDF officer training program are graduates of AMIT schools. So when you think about it, that's, that is a really good outcome. The bug group pass rate is um, uh, 86%, nationwide it's 70%. So AMIT does things wonderfully. We are able to um, innovate. We are able to do things modernly. We adjust education needs. You know, education, school isn't teacher in the front and kids taking notes and rote memorization. It's all about synthesis. We have a new program, it's a few years old now called Gogia, where it's teaching the teachers how to educate and how the teacher students can learn. Because it's not about teaching, it's about educating and getting the students to learn and to love to learn. Um, so with COVID, as you know, it's been really hard. We're all here with Zoom. Well, not everybody, especially our 70% of our students, they don't all have computers at home. Amit distributed 4,000 computers to our students and made sure that they had internet connection so that they would not lose a day of school. We want everybody to be caught up and to be ahead and to have a great time. So that's a bit about Amit. It's 95 years old. Thank you for sponsoring. Thank you for joining. Now about Dina Levy. Dina is one of the kindest, most wonderful people I know. She is just an amazing person. She graduated from Stern. She has a degree in computer and in, in fine arts, which is just kind of both different sides of the brain, but both sides and they're amazing. Dina has works that are commissioned all over the place. If you are in the, actually, I think nationwide, I believe internationally also, if you receive an award of a paper cut, chances are it's a Dina Levy. Um, they make wonderful wedding presents. I have availed myself of calling her up. I need a wedding present. And she's just amazing, amazing stuff. Really wonderful. She started uh, paper cutting 26 years ago and, um, she hasn't stopped and it's been wonderful. And, um, and she's made, I guess, almost 2000 paper cuts, Tina. I think it's more than that, but that's a lot. Um, that's- uh, 1958 actually, as of this morning. Wow. Okay, well, so and after today, it'll be 1959, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, it's without okay. further ado, um, welcome everybody. And let's all learn some paper cutting from Dina. Um, hi, thank you for that beautiful introduction, Connie. Um, so nice to see all of you here today. Um, really, really nice. Okay, so this is you know, how before I love you. Before you begin, um, yeah. there was somebody who was asking if you could post the design in the chat so that perhaps it'll give somebody, um, the person can also send their email in the chat and I'll email you the PDF and a JPEG version uh, just if anybody else has any issues with it. Somehow, I am not able to do that from my screen right now. I don't know why, but 
Um, if you can do that, Janine, if you're able to. Okay. Uh, I just tried. And now um, my whole Zoom disappeared. Hold on a second. Okay, I'm going to send it directly to the person who just emailed me. Thank you, Hilda. Perfect. Sorry. About I will that. do it now. No problem. Okay. So, first of all, because we're from all over, um, I'm sure everyone at this point, we're now in January. Um, knows how to use the chat, we can all kind of type where we're from because I when I looked at the list, it was so exciting for me to see people from Chicago and Cleveland and I don't know, Israel It's just it's just fun Riverdale and wherever else you are from and Teaneck, New Jersey, of course. But um, so that that's fun if you want to say hi from wherever you are. Um, that's the first thing. Also, if you want to say anything, you want to unmute yourself, you can either unmute yourself or you can also use the space bar, which I don't know if all of you know about that little trick, but you can hit that, hit the space bar and you can also talk. Um, okay, so, oh, look, I couldn't find my glasses and they're here already. So um, what our little Seder this morning will be is first I'll tell you a little bit about Judaic paper cutting. I will give you a little, um, a slideshow, then we'll have a tour of my studio, and then we'll get right onto it and we'll all cut a beautiful paper cutting for suitable to be framed. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to share my screen and, um, and start the slideshow. Perfect. Okay. So I thought it would be nice to start with a paper cup from Russia in 1810 to just give you a sense of how far back paper cutting and especially Jewish paper cutting went. Um, so this is Russia 1810. And as you can see, first of all, the person who made it, unfortunately, I got these from Yehudit Shadur. She was not as much a paper cutter. She was also a paper cut restorer and she would get old paper cutting. She lived in Israel in Jerusalem and I, I met her twice. And she has a whole book of these old paper cuttings that she restored, that she found and restored with her son. But this is a Mizrach and you can faintly see um, the word Mizrach here and you can tell it's Judaic, it has um, a menorah. And it's very intricately cut as is this Mizrach, which was Polish. Um, you can also see, I thought it was interesting that there's a, a line down the middle, like that the paper was folded in half and then uh, and cut, which I thought was interesting. And you can see the Aseret had did both the Ten Commandments, which with also the first few commandments up here. Um, and this is also a Mizrach. People tended to have Mizrachs then. Um, this is California. 1861, well before even I was born. But again, this looks like some sort of um, shul, maybe the Aron and um, and uh, the Ner Tamid, the Eternal Light, the Menorah, also very Jewish. Um, and then we go back where I started, way back in uh, 1994. As Janine mentioned, I majored in computer science and in art, and I always had a love of art. And I always took a class at the JCC or wherever. And then when my first daughter, Ariella, was born, I had maternity leave. And my husband bought me a book called um, The Joy of Paper Cutting. And it was, and in it, it said, all you need is a knife, a piece of paper, and a pencil. And I said, well, I can do that. Let me try to make something for my newborn, Ariella. And I did, this is the very first paper cutting I made. And if you can, if you look closely, you will see that there's a lot of pencil marks all around because I did not realize you should either erase your pencil marks or turn the whole thing over so that you don't have any pencil marks. And the other interesting thing about this very first paper cutting is I wanted images. I wanted to do an underwater theme and I wanted images like this. But um, if you don't know how to draw a seahorse, Nowadays, it's very easy. You just type it into Google and you'll have 33,000 seahorses. But um, I went to the library to the children's section and found a book on seahorses and then I had to copy these seahorses. So now um, even people who are so uh, who are craftsy but not so artsy so easily can, can make their own designs. Um, this is the very second paper cutting I made when my grandfather turned 80. We couldn't decide what to get him. 
And like, I came up with this idea in the middle of the night, like, oh my God, I'm going to get him. I'm going to make him a family tree. Um, and thank God he had a nice big family, which of course has grown tremendously since then. I made this probably 1990 something, but um, this was the one of the first family tree I made. Um, and then I went to Jeanette Coven Oren. She, I don't know if any of you have heard of her. She's an unbelievable paper cutter. She now lives in Connecticut. And I came to her with Ariella and a family tree. And I said, I'm really enjoying this. You know, should I quit my day job? And she said, you have two choices. You can either write Shalom and try to sell it to Judaica stores, or you can uh, make them for people, for people you know. So that's what I decided to just make them for people I know. This is a great story about how this Aisha Chayel came to be, but I think I'm going to save this story for while we're cutting. But just remember that um, after the family tree, this uh, Aisha Chayel was the next thing I made. And um, as, as you might think, it was much harder to write Aisha Chayel, um, 22 lines of Hebrew text, than to write Sarah in a little leaf. But I do want to save that story for a little later. But these were the first ones that I made when people were having bat mitzvahs and bar mitzvahs. So I would make, write their name and give it as gifts. And eventually people um, saw it and ordered them for themselves. I also met the person who owned Art Scroll Printing and I made quite a few Art Scroll cards after that. These cards, I made one big paper cutting and I gave it to him and he scanned it into a laser cutter and made 20 or 30,000 of them and sold them. And uh, they're each their own paper cutting. This is something I made for my in-laws 50th anniversary, and I like to hide things in here. So if you look carefully, not only do I have their, their children and grandchildren's names, but they lived in Holland, and um, then they moved to America, they moved to Detroit, Michigan, and last night I actually did a, paper, uh, did a class for Michigan. It was kind of fun for them to see their little Detroit in there. Um, they owned Tasty Pastry, which was a bakery in Washington Heights. They live near the George Washington Bridge. It's their chuppah. So all things that pertain to them that was a, were important to them. Um, you know, things like Mahjan. I, I've hidden many, many interesting things. Their shul, Shari Hatikva. Um, I make things in three dimension. This is a, um, this is a Birkat Habayit, a blessing for their home with parents' names and their children's names. This is a ketubah I made where I, I write the text and then we hide a lot of things in and around the ketubah. Uh, this is an, very exciting for me. I did something for the children of Chernobyl and I made something for about 40 different famous people. So that was actually exciting. And I took a picture with Michael Douglas. Yes, that is me. Um, I did about 10 years ago, they called me from Sony to do something for Matis Yahoo, which was such an exciting thing when they called and they said, you probably never heard of the singer Matis Yahoo, but um, uh, we'd but like you to do state, his. Dina, state that Sony called you. you just yes, so, so Dan that. from Sony called me, like, you know, you pick up your phone and he's like, hi, this is Dan from Sony and I'm on your website and I'd like to, you know, order something, a, a CD for Matis Yahoo. And, you know, you never heard of him. And I'm thinking, of course, I heard of him. Play it cool, you know, play it cool. So I'm like, oh, thank you so much. So I gave him my price. And he's like, oh, you could do better than that. I'm going to double it because I'm going to work you so hard like you've never worked before. And I need it in two weeks. And you need to work 20 hours a day. So I really worked very hard. And I was very proud of it. And the top left is what I made for them. And then I must have gone, maybe I told people, I don't know if you remember way back, we used to have Shabbat meals together with other people. So I had a Shabbat meal with um, a couple. I, I don't remember this, but then about two months later, I called Dan and I said, well, when is the CD coming out? And he said, oh, I, I do want to say that Montes Yahoo was performing on my birthday in Madison Square Garden. And they got me backstage passes and he was going to sign my thing. I was so excited. And then I called and they said, oh, Matis Yahoo decided to go another way. He doesn't want a paper cutting. He just wants his face on his CD. And I was so upset about it. So I didn't go to the, I did not go to the concert. I did not like him anymore. He wasn't talented anymore. And then um, about six months later, I was at a Little League game and a woman said, oh, are you Dina Levy? I met you at a meal a few months ago. 
And you said you made Matsus Yahoo CD cover. And I said, oh, sorry, that wasn't, you know, I, I didn't. And she said, really? Because I just bought the CD last week. I have it in my car. I love it. I said, is it a paper cut? She said, yeah. I said, can I see it? So I remember where her car was parked, like running down, you know, from the Rada Center. And we got her, we got it. And it was my CD. So I called Dan the next day. I said, Dan, you used it. He said, what are you so upset about? Like, we paid you. What do you want? I'm like, I don't know. So he sent me a whole bunch of them and they made t-shirts and it was, it was kind of fun. Anyway, that's my little Montes Yahoo story. Um, I also went to Poland with members of my family on a, like a roots trip. And I met Monica, who is a Polish paper cut artist. And I go every other year to a paper cutting conference with all kinds of people who make all kinds of paper cutting. And it's so interesting to see, I mean, mostly, or not mostly, there's like two or three Jewish people, but people from all over. And I, I love just meeting them and hearing their ideas and what they do to frame things and to cut things. And it's great. These are two more paper cuttings that I've done. The bottom right one I'm particularly proud of, it was for my father's 65th birthday. And there are 65 hidden items in here um, from the books he's written to the, I don't know, to he was number 22 on his basketball team. You know, when he was a young boy, he met my mom at Camp A Shell, if any of you are old enough to remember Camp A Shell. And this was our shul before we knocked it down, the Hebrew Institute, just all kinds of nice things, songs he's written, um, things like that, Yankee fan. So I, I like hiding things like that. Um, this is a family tree I did recently, again, with some hidden things and a um, candle lighting blessing with their children's names in it and birthdays. Um, these are two other things that I, I really thought were fun and indicative of my work. The top left one is now at the Brooklyn Children's Museum, the Chabad Museum, 770 Eastern Parkway. And this has the text of the Kiddush, which has five themes. The Friday night blessing over the wine has five themes. And I depicted each theme in a petal. Like this is Asher Kiddush Anub Mitzvotav. Um, these are the mitzvot, and I, I hid a bunch of mitzvot in here from the menorah to the chauffeur to everything in between. This is the Karola Masei Breshit. This is the um, creation, the seven days of creation. This is Eher Litzia Mitzrayim. This is the exodus from Egypt. Kivanu um, Bacharta. This is, we're getting the, the Torah on Mount Sinai, and this is the Shabbat theme. Um, this is also something I made on the bottom right for Ravar and Lichtenstein, a blessed memory, who um, went on his 80th birthday. So they picked different verses that they thought were appropriate to Ravaron and different um, and different pictures. Um, this is a really old picture of a paper cutting class I did back at Keter Torah. I don't know how many years ago, but a lot of years ago. And um, um, and this was a fabulous summer that I spent. Uh, a few weeks in Africa and Rwanda in 2014, when my husband went to do a medical mission for three months, I visited for a few weeks and I wanted to do something that gave back a little bit. And I visited over 20 orphanages and women's homes and schools. And I just love how I didn't speak a word of Kini Rwanda and they didn't speak a word of English. And I got them to make these highs and they loved it. And they really loved it. Um, this is my father, a very proud father giving a uh, paper cutting at his dinner from his school. And this is an old picture of me at my desk. Um, and that's my little uh, kind of introduction to my to me, an introduction to paper cutting. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's so hard to talk to nobody. So I'm glad it, it, it's hard to, to be a Zoom teacher. OK, so we did the slideshow. Oh, look, and now we get to see how all these people are from all over Massachusetts, Chicago, oh, you shall lie in. So nice to see everybody. Kind of brings everybody together. Um, okay, so I'm also gonna show you um, if I can do a view. Actually, if somebody who's more technical can get, um, I wanna show you that we are going to talk what about paper is, cutting. Yeah, so what I did is I spotlighted you and your paper cut. Oh, you did? Uh, I don't camera. have that. I don't have yeah. it. Okay, so yeah. everyone can see 
Can everyone see my knife in my hand right now? Yes. I know I have two screens. Let me check yes. on the people in the cheap seat, she seats over here. Yes, everyone can see. Okay, great. Because that's confusing to some people. I'm going to give you a two minute tour of my studio with this other one because this camera is much better than my than my old computer camera. The first thing I like to show people is this bird, this very large bird um, in my studio. And what I do, what I did was um, when I used to go every other year to this thing called collection of the Guild of American Paper Cutters. And you are all welcome to join the guild. You don't have to be an artist. You can just enjoy paper cutting. But everyone has their own thing. And everyone gives a class and what they like or what's important to them. And there's a woman who makes like life size animals. And she, or I guess she used to, she'd go and in, go into churches and synagogues and she'd put them on a big table in the middle and everyone would cut a little piece of it. And at the end, she'd have something big and beautiful for the synagogue to hang up out of paper. And so I like won the lottery at this thing and I won this big bird and I came home and it's like, what do you do with this big bird? So it was in my closet for a while, but when I cle cleaned up, I thought this would be nice to hang in the up there. So it kind of lives up there. Um, and these are a lot of paper cuttings that I've done. And most people might ask me how I have these paper cuttings hanging here, because I don't really have so much inventory. Everything is pretty much personalized. So either these things are not real paper cuttings, I just made copies if I like them, or um, they're mistakes that I've done. And there are plenty of mistakes that I've done. I'll just move over here. I have a big light box table that I work on that I, um, that I love. I have um, more paper cuttings. And here are all the cards that I've made over time. And I'd say half the cards are real cards. They're um, paper cut out. And then the other half of the cards are not. Like this is actually cut through, but a lot of the cards are not. Um, so it depends what the people wanted. And oh, Janine, I never thought of this, but a long time ago I was in the newspaper and Janine cut it out and gave me a, a framed picture of it. And since then, whenever I'm in the newspaper, I, I cut it out and I framed them. And then here's some wow. in books and stuff. Janine, I, I didn't think of that until this minute that you did that for me. I don't know if you remember wow. that, but. Um, Thank well, you. I'm number one fan. So of course that fan <laughs> is going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> number one fan. You're cute. Um, okay. So let's talk about our project today because it's going to be a lot of fun. And I do want to tell you that I put, if you scroll up, I do want to put my, uh, I put my email here. I also put my website and I now, I have arrived. I have a Instagram that my daughter and my son-in-law have told me that I'm not really a paper cut artist until I have an Instagram. So I have an Instagram. So I put that all, if you scroll up, you will see um, I have that, but I'm telling you that so that when you're finished and you love doing this, I have other designs as well. And I would love, if you send me a picture of what you've cut today, I would love to send you more designs to keep cutting because it's really a lot of fun and it's, um, it'll be your, your newest hobby that you love. So let's get started we have first we have a your desk or your table then we're going to put that down some sort of piece of cardboard so that you don't ruin your desk or your table um, it's best not to use an amazon box because it's corrugated and you kind of punch through so it's best to use the back of a notebook if you don't have a self-sealing mat if you're like a quilter or a, a person like that you may or a scrapbooker you may have a mat I'm happy to send you a link if you want to continue this to something on Amazon that's just a few dollars. Then we have your shalom here. Okay, so, and then you have your knife in your hand. So just kind of shake your head yes if um, you feel like you're you're ready to begin. Got, got a couple of thumbs they can up. Also, they can also put in, in the reaction section, you, could, you can uh, do a thumbs up. So if you go on the bottom right, if any of you or if you have an issue, of course, chat, but you can thumbs up for Dina so she knows oh, as she's going along. Oh, I never saw that before. I love yeah. that. All right. Oh, that's it's, something new. We're okay. having some fun this morning. Okay. Also, I forgot to say this, but 
if you wouldn't mind, if your first name is not on your screen, if you can go to the top right corner where there's on, on your own screen where there's three dots and you click it and you can rename yourself. So if you know your name is Shira and it says like, or, or as I would say, Talia, and your name is Talzi Walzi, which is my daughter's name. Um, if you can write your name, because I'd love to refer to you as your first name. Thank you, Sharon. Um, and uh, that would be helpful. Thank you. Okay. Now let's begin. If some of you have never used a exact I don't see the three dots. <laughs> oh, you're Stephen A, but actually I can, re uh, I can rename you. What is your first name? Renee. Renee? Yes. Perfect. Um, okay. Uh, all right. So we have the knife. Everyone has a knife. Um, the blades are disposable. So the blades do get dull after a couple of times of use. So I just want to show you if your blade happens to fall out, don't think it broke. You can hold it over here and twist it. Twist the bottom, be careful, it is sharp, it is a knife. And then you can kind of take out the blade and put it back in and put in a new blade and then hold it here again. Make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, good. Now, the first thing I wanna do for some of you who have never used an X-Acto knife before is we, we are gonna cut out the gray sections and we're gonna leave in the white sections. I guess I'll show you uh, a finished one. This is a finished shalom that, that I did. And um, it's on a shiny paper, but you can see that the white says shalom and the silver or any background color that you choose is the background. Now, um, does anyone see anything, any problem with the word shalom? Just scream it out. It's backwards. It's backwards, thank you. Um, so it is backwards because we're going to be cutting on this side and when we paste it, we're going to turn it over to paste so that if you're not exactly, exactly on, um, if you're, if you're not, here we go. If you're not exactly, exactly on the, um, on the line, it doesn't matter. You will not see, you, you won't tell. Okay. So because we're cutting out this gray, I thought it was a good idea to just use your knife a little bit instead of going straight to your paper cutting on the bottom, um, if you want, if you don't feel comfortable, and just you can make a line or two just so that you can get the feel of what the knife feels like. You're holding the knife at a 45 degree angle, kind of like a pencil, not too tight, not too loose. And you're just going up and down and you're you're digging into the um, into the mat underneath you or whatever you have underneath it. So you kind of feel it. If you do it too lightly and you're going to have to go over a few times, it's going to be jaggedy. So that's not good. And also don't go horizontal, only go vertical, like in the line of the knife so that you can have a few rips in here. If you wanted to go the other way, I turn my paper. I turn the paper a lot. There's a lot of turning of the paper. What do you do on a curve? Um, good question. What do you do on a curve? So I will do a curve here, but I move my arm. I kind of swizzle my arm, but if it's a bigger curve than that, I turn the paper. I leave my knife in and I turn the paper. Dina? Yes. Um, it's impossible to see what you're doing. Uh, there's no picture of your hands or the, the, the um, you know, the paper or anything else. You're just talking, but it doesn't. But it all I see is your face. Have you gone into speaker view? I've got <laughs> Dina, uh, Israel, I've got Dina in the middle of the screen, or I had her, and there's, uh, and the gallery view is at the top over there. Hmm. I mean, I'm you want to put the, why don't you just put the paper cut screen as the, um, so you want us to just pin the paper cut screen? Okay, or, or, or pin both of I mean, us I again. Can, you I are, okay, let them. But I'd like to see the paper. <laughs> okay, let's, let me find your paper. And see there, paper. there is, and can there see is a screen of just the paper. Just like you see people, you'll see a screen with just the paper. Really? 
It, well, there's yeah, a small you... screen, but we still don't, I still don't see the, now I see the there paper. There we go. Yay. Now yeah. I see the paper. Now I see the paper. Okay, so we'll, we'll start this little demo again for those of you who didn't see it, but we can take our knife and go dance straight down and get a nice clean cut. So the first thing I'd like you to do is to find the square right here, which is the mem, the final mem that has a square, because those have kind of straight lines. And if you do the right and the left side, just two lines down, and make sure you get those corners. Any tips if we're not using the Zacto knife and using a scissor? Yes. Are you using a cuticle scissor? Yes. <laughs> um, yes, absolutely. So I would punch a hole right in the middle and then cut till an end and then cut out the square. Okay. Um, I did the right and the left side. Now I'm going to turn my paper and I'm going to make two more lines. Just make sure that you kind of overshoot the little sides so that when you take it out, this piece comes out. It doesn't get stuck. Now, I have a question. If I do gallery view, does that do gallery view for everybody? No. Okay, that's good. So you guys can still see my paper. Correct. It should be. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So let me know if you've all taken out a square successfully. Thank you, Shaney. My first friend in probably 1980 in camp. So nice to see you. Um, anyone else? Everyone? Anyone make a nice, oh, Janine has a square. Janine's not going to hire me anymore to make her paper cuttings. She's going to make them herself. Michelle has a square. Anyone else have a square? Uh, Arlene. Did anyone, is anyone having a problem? Oh, good. Young Israel of somebody. But if, if you guys can make your name instead of Y-I-O-T so that I can uh, know who you are, that would be good. I'm trying to use a box cutter because I didn't have the exacto, so it's it's a, it's a little bit challenging here. Yeah, it's a little cumbersome, but people have used box cutters. It's a little cumbersome, but then when you do go out and get a knife, you'll see how much easier it is. So, but you uh, said you have to hold it. It's like not really cutting through properly. How do I hold it again? You said at an angle. Yeah, I can't really. I don't see who's talking. I'd love oh, to see here. you when I. Well, let me put my video back on. I don't know if you can see it. Okay, that's me, Jenny. But I, you probably can't see what I'm doing. Um, I don't see Jenny. Yeah, I mean, here's, here's my paper. But oh, there you are. Hi, Jenny. Okay, <laughs> now I see you. But it's show not... me your box knife. Uh, Oof. Yeah, it's it has. Oh, I'll see. Yeah, maybe try to get the blade out a little more if that's possible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that that's gonna help you, and just. Do it kind of on the tip of the blade. It's not very dainty. Right. Yeah, I'm okay, it. now after we have the little square taken out, I like to go down underneath the heart. I go down and I kind of do that diamond. Two horizontal, uh, vertical lines and then I turn my paper and I do the other two vertical lines. And I got another piece. And then what I usually do is I go and just keep looking for shapes that look interesting to me and go one shape at a time, maybe to the left of that diamond. I And I left the heart kind of blank on purpose. You can either maybe write somebody's name in it or you can make your own design within the heart. Like it's nice sometimes to design something yourself. You can make a smaller heart in there. You can cut out a flower. You can cut out the word mom. I did see my mom on this Zoom at some point. I don't know if she's still here, but um, you can make it a gift for somebody. How are you guys doing? Scissor is not working too well. <laughs> Oh, the scissor's not working too well? No, 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 no. Oh, no, use it as a scissor. Use it Don't as use a it as a knife. 
Oh my goodness, you're kidding. Okay. No. No, use it as a scissor. Yeah, there you, you go. Just reprint the uh, design if you want, and you can and start we're again. We're not using the cardboard. Yes, then you don't. You definitely don't need the cardboard if you have a scissor. Okay. Thank you. And that's all the difference. Oh, good. <laughs> Excellent. Anyone else having an, an issue, a problem? You know, I have a question. Does it matter what type of paper? Are certain papers easier to work with than, say, printer paper? Yes, that's a good question. So the, I use a little bit heavier of a paper, a Canson paper. There's also Fabriano, different papers that are about 90 pounds that are a little heavier, but not quite cardstock. And they are a little more forgiving, maybe. They're a little easier to cut. Or I find it uh, good to cut. Tina, can you say the name again? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll put it in the chat. Thank you. Um, it's Canson is the brand and the paper is me T N like that. There's also a Fabriano paper that I like. Um, and you can go into any craft store, Michael's and ask for that Canson paper or go to Amazon or Dick Blick or wherever you want. And you can get that paper. We're going to be sending, just so everybody knows, we'll send a recording of this, um, as well as Dina's email, uh, website, Instagram handle, and so forth. And, and you certainly can get in touch with her directly. With pleasure, with pleasure. Um, so while we're doing some more cutting, um, I'll answer a few questions if you'd like, and then I can tell you some interesting stories. Um, and I'll show you what, what I'm working on now, which is kind of fun. I'm working on a few things that are a little different. Dina, uh, in the spirit of, I guess, con conserving, and we're saying conservation for two Bishvat, do you do anything with the um, paper that comes out, the sp you know, the squares and all that? They, they, the, in the Guild of American Paper Cutters, they call them schnitt, schnitt bits because Sharon Schnitt is the, is the uh, German word for this, and they think that it started back then especially people in like Lancaster. So they're called schnittbits and there's a gentleman that takes his schnittbits and he makes things out of them. Like he, you know, I don't know, makes designs out of them. But no, I do, I throw them all in the garbage. Actually. <laughs> but in Teaneck, we recycle paper, so. Yes, we so do fun. recycle paper. Yeah. The other thing I do want to tell you is I do make mistakes. Um, that's usually one of the first questions. And so if I cut off, let's say, um, uh, a petal, or if I cut a petal too small, if I cut it too big, I can just cut it smaller. But if I cut a petal too small, um, if I want it to be symmetrical, I can cut the other side too small also, and then nobody, um, and if it still looks good, then it's perfect, fine. Or sometimes if you cut off a petal by mistake, I, you can save that petal so that when you glue it onto paper, when we're done, it'll be sitting right next to it and, and you won't really be able to tell the difference. Um, I did something really cool recently. I, I saw that because there was no guild um, weekend where they usually have fun things, a woman did something on layering paper cutting. So I thought it would be fun for me to try something new. So last week I made a Birkat Habayit um, I don't know if you can see this, but I did different layers of paper. And this is not really what I usually do. It's, it's for someone who was much more modern and wanted, she said, I want no Jerusalem and no vines. And I'm thinking, how do you make a paper cutting with no Jerusalem and no vines? But I made it with a bunch of um, layers, which kind of came out cool. So that's what I've been working on recently. And... Um, Can you repeat the instructions a little bit? I, you know, I'm using this box cutter, which is not ideal. And I'm having a hard time, I think, like pressing hard enough for it to cut all the way through. And so then if I go back, like it sort of shreds the paper a little bit. But you Yeah, like I think also your blade may not be sharp enough. Sharp enough, enough because sometimes, yeah. do you have a cuticle scissor at home? I do. 
that might be easier because there's nothing more frustrating than a than a dull blade. Okay, and doing all the things the right. Like cut it right, just like a small. Yeah, cut it like a small scissor. There's a woman again that I met in this Guild of American Paper Cutter. She uses a four foot sheep shear and she cuts these little intricate paper cuttings, and it's just it's so interesting. It's so interesting. Um, I'll show you. I'm working on a family tree at the moment. So this is how I design something. I'm using graph paper, which I love, and I'm putting people's names in it. You know, she wanted, this woman wanted a globe and wanted to, the words Torah, Avoda, and Gamilut Chasadim. Under the globe, she wanted a camera. She wanted their logo. This is, I think, a 10th anniversary present to her husband. Um, and with her, the names of her children. So this is something that I will be working on for the remainder of this week. Uh, about how long, I know that each piece is different, of course, but an average piece, how long does it take for you to create? Um, so each piece has three components, the design, the cutting, and the um, background. So the design can take anywhere from, let's say, three or four hours to many, many, many hours, because sometimes, as you know, in life, you can design for a lot of hours and then you send a sketch and the people are like, that's not exactly what I had in mind, or can you make this bigger or make this smaller? Um, so that takes longer. You know, sometimes it might be a school or a shul, let's say, just make something beautiful with this pasuk on it. So then you have a little more free reign. The cutting, and, and during that process, I can't really do anything. I can't listen to any podcasts or talk on the phone or listen to music. I'm really very um, okay. uh, focused. But once I cut, so now sometimes cutting can take, you know, a few hours or 20 hours, but sometimes I cut. And while I'm cutting, I can do, a, I can multitask. I can uh, listen to music. And I like to listen to podcasts often, like if there is some sort of class that I didn't get to listen to, I'll write it on my list and say, oh, I'll do that while I cut the next thing. Um, and then there's the background. So sometimes they'll just say I want blue and then I'll paint blue. But sometimes people will send me swatches of their couch or something like that. Um, for the background paper, I usually paint the backgrounds and I paint them. I'll show you what they look like. Um, this week I tried something new. I don't know if anyone's into marbleizing, but um, oh, I saw that. I saw what you did. Yeah. Yeah. So my daughter came over one day, and I had learned this um, technique somewhere, and it's so easy. I hope you can all see this paper, but you put shaving cream in a like nine by thirteen tin, and then you add either paint drops or. Uh, food coloring drops and you swirl it with a toothpick and then you put your paper in. And when you take it out, this is, I mean, it's magnificent. And to put a paper cutting on top of this, like would be so cool. So that's also fun. That's just a shalom I had done with some kids, but it's just so pretty to have something different as your background. Oh, Either you, just, you just rest the paper on top of the shaving cream mi mixture and it absorbs it. Yeah, well, yeah, you push it down because it's a very thin layer of shaving cream. So you push it down. Okay. If you Google shaving cream marbleized paper, you'll see a lot of YouTube videos on how to do it. It's definitely a fun project. Uh, someone was asking Dina about getting different templates. I mean, this is an original Dina Levy. Um, are there other templates? Yes. Yeah, so if you if you send me your... Um, your finished prod product. I have about five or six templates that I've been working on. So I'm happy to send them to you. Um, you also can do the, um, you can look online for templates. You can go on Etsy. I, I put in like paper cutting templates and I think for two or $3, you can download a lot of different, people make different templates. Um, a lot of trees, a lot of birds, you can also look for coloring books. I found that coloring books are very helpful um, for that, for things like that. 
Oh, Connie just posted a shaving cream video. Thank you. Um, how did you do the layers? It was so interesting on how I did the layers. I can show you that now. Um, who asked me that? Michelle. Um, so if this is what I'm working on now. Let me get a colored piece of paper and show you how I would do the layers. Okay, so I have a yellow piece of paper that I'm going to put under it. Okay, so anyone interested in the layers, you can look up for a second. But if I wanted to make this a layer, I would cut around the heart, but I would leave space for the yellow. So I think you can kind of see that. You have to paste the paper down so it doesn't move because then it would not look good. But do you, do you see how I did that? Yeah, good? Yeah. Cool, right? So that's how I did the layers on the other one. Um, I, okay, I'll tell you the, uh, a story if no one has any questions for the next minute. Do you ever do three-dimensional, like with little foam pieces in between? Yes, I've done many three-dimensional. I actually have one right here in my entranceway where um, I'll go show it to you in a second. This is one of the first things I've ever done. And I made it for my husband and I. Um, it's a Bruchim Habaim, and it says our name, Mishpachat Levi. And I made, I was like laughing because I, I made the Kadeshis, or I don't know what that's called for a doctor. And then I put some art stuff thinking that I want to be an artist, but I'm not really an artist. But if you can see that the letters, the Hebrew letters, I don't know if you can kind of see, but they're three dimensional, like they pop up and I cut the letters twice and I, I did it that way. Um, so I do do, I do do that three dimensional. I also, I made a Mizra, I, I made, I made things three dimensional. It just takes longer to do, but it, it is quite beautiful. And when the program is over, can someone just, rather than having to listen to the whole thing and rereading the, all the chats, just have all, you know, highlight all the names of the papers and the emails and all that information? Yes, Janine will be happy to have that. Yeah, we're going to send out, we're going to send out, as I said, her contact information, the, the paper, we're not going to put in the, you know, in the um, thank yous. So if you want to just take that down, but her contact info will be in the follow up. So Thank you. Can, can you say the paper again? Sure. It's Canton is the brand and Me Tiens is the kind of paper. Can you spell that? Yeah. It's C A N S O N M I and then uh, T I E N T E S. I see you wrote Fabriano. Yeah, That's Fabriano well. is a Canton's one brand, and Fabriano makes a very similar paper also. Tina, you know, my, my cutouts are kind of shaggy looking, not, not smooth. Some of them are, but some of them are shaggy. Um, okay, so if they were all shaggy, maybe you would need a new blade. If some of them are, it's just how you're holding the knife and, um, you know, try to make clean, like, um, One like, I ask, what do you do if you accidentally cut one of the connecting lines? Um, great question, but I don't see who you are. But if you cut one of the connecting lines, um, then I would, if it's just, it's, if it's still hanging on, then leave it, just be gentle with it. If you cut off an entire leaf, like I'm gonna, I'll cut off this leaf by mistake here. Right. Um, if you cut off the whole leaf, which I'm about to do, then you save the leaf on the side with all your, not with all your little schnitt bits, but with another thing. Ooh, here, I just lost my leaf, here it is. So you save it on the side and then, here's my leaf. Um, and then when you paste it down, you make sure to paste it exactly there. 
Um, okay, I will tell you just a cute story. One of the very first paper cuttings, or maybe the third paper cutting I made, um, the principal of a local high school was being honored and someone called me to make the paper cutting and I was very excited because it was my first real commission. And she wanted a family tree, which was great because I just made one for my grandfather. So I knew that that wouldn't be too difficult. And she then she said to me, oh, you know what? I'd rather you make me an Eshet Chayil, um, which is the bless, uh, prayer we say Friday night to the woman of the household. It's 22 lines, one line for each Hebrew letter, starting with Aleph. And I hung up the phone and I said, oh no, I can write like Sarah in a leaf, but there's no way I can write 22 lines of Hebrew text. So I, um, I didn't know what to do. And I remembered that I took a cal calligraphy like mini course in college. And I remembered the name of my teacher and I called him hoping that he would write the inside perhaps and I would do the outside. And it was so coincidental that, um, oh my gosh, I forgot his name, Greenspan. Jay Greenspan lived in Teaneck, New Jersey, just a few miles from me. And I called him and although he didn't remember me, he was so gracious and said, why don't you come over and show me what you got? So I went over and he was so nice. And he said, um, how much are you charging for this? And I said, $500. He said, okay, well, I'm going to charge you. I can do the inside. No problem. I'm going to charge you $600 and I'll write the inside. And I said, well, I'm not that good of a businesswoman, but that doesn't seem like a good business model to me. And he said, exactly. Because if I write the inside for you, then I'm always going to be doing all the stuff for you and you can do it yourself. I don't wanna be writing ketubas for you. I want you to be doing this all by yourself. And he really gave me such a, it was a, such a nice lesson and a, he gave me um, a lot of self-confidence to do it myself. He said, you have to go home and sit in a quiet house and write every letter like you're only writing one letter and one word slowly. And, um, and it was the beginning of a wonderful relationship. He really, Toward the end of his life, I was doing a lot of his paper cuttings. He would write a ketubah and then he would ask me to do the outside. So um, it was really very, a very nice, he was a very, very, very gifted calligrapher, Jay Greenspan. So uh, that's, he, he gave me my start like that, which was great. Dean, I have a question. It's Susan yes. Rosenbaum. Um, oh, I didn't even know you were on. Hi, Susan. So good I to am. see you. Thank you. Um, is it easier to use an X-Acto knife than a scissor? I'm, I happen to be using a scissor and it's it's great. It's working out great, but I just want to know if it's easier to use an X-Acto knife. Um, it's kind of like saying, you know, it, it, look, I like using a scissor better. There are people, you know, you go to these conferences and it's like two schools of thought. It's the scissors versus it's the Jets versus the, I forgot the other team. So, right. you know, it's personal preference. This woman who uses a four foot <laughs> sheeping shear is convinced that this is the most intricate, great scissor that she can have. So I think, you know, you're welcome to pick up an X-Acto knife and, and try it yourself. Um, I tried to get one on Saturday night and I couldn't, but I figured I could get one. Listen, I'll get why one. didn't you call me? You could have come here. And I know, but one. okay, so I'll get one. <laughs> okay, I just was curious. Um, what was the name of the paper again? Can some, what was the second word? I'm sorry. It's two words, the second word. It's M-I and then T-I-E-N-T-E-S. T-E-S, like Sam? Yeah. There's no second T. Can't on me T-N's. Dina, it's Can you demonstrate with the scissors, please? I'm sorry? Can you demonstrate so we can see how you cut it with the scissors, like without crunching? Yes, yeah, hold on a second. I have a scissor right here. Um, did somebody else want to ask a question? Well, my scissor is curved a little bit at the end. Is that, is it better to use one that's not curved? It's a little challenging on certain curves when you're- No, curved. but you know what? Use your, when you're using your scissor, I'm going to cut using the scissor now. You don't have to cut at the very end. Do you know what I mean? Like cut more. You're out of the screen. Cut more in the middle. And then that little thing won't matter so much. Oh. I have a question for you. Sure. Do you, 
Do you ever use the laser cutting machine or do you do everything by hand? Um, I do everything by hand. I, um, if, you know, I, someone wants an invitation or something, I do have a few people, a few companies that I deal with who have laser machines. In, in another lifetime, I would love to have a laser machine, know how to do this on the computer, and then five minutes later, have it all cut for me, and then change the name. I, I don't have that capability. My husband did just buy me a cricket for my birthday this week, so um, I think I have a lot of work to do learning how to use it, but it's a machine that kind of cuts things. I don't know if you can make your own design, but, you know, I... I'm not that proficient on the computer. In fact, until recently I was making designs for my classes. I, I do this Shalom design by hand and I usually just X what's not in uh, what you have to cut out. But um, I decided I wanted it shaded in gray and I scanned this into the computer, into a graphics program. And it took me like two weeks to figure out how to do this. I was watching a lot of YouTube videos. It was so frustrating and so gratifying because now I can do it much faster, you know, with, with the next design. Now I've made like five designs already for different classes. If someone says, oh, I want Jerusalem or I want a heart or I want a this, I can make something different. I ran uh, one of the laser machines. I worked for someone here and she did beautiful paper cuts and she hired me. And one of my jobs was to run the laser machine for her. She did, she had an invitation business as well as doing ketuvas and other things. Oh, wonderful. Who, who is she and where do you live? I live in California. She was in the Valley. Her name was um, Risa Mandelberg, the paper oh, I... doll company. I don't know if you- Oh know. yes, I do. I've, I have heard of her paper doll. Yeah, she has a lot of cards and stuff. Yes, I, I think early on I had some deal. I spoke to her. That's wonderful. I thought you might have met her at your convention or something. Yes, yes, that's wonderful. Does anyone here have a paper cutting they want to share? You know, if you were maybe in spot somewhere or somewhere it has something pretty. Sometimes people come up with really interesting paper cuttings, like something that they bought at some crafts fair and then Sometimes the, I know even know the artist from something. So if anyone wants to show and tell. I don't have it here. I don't have it here, but I have this amazing paper cut from an artist um, named Jackie Nichols from the UK. And have you heard of her? Do you know no. her? Okay, so, so it pays to look her up online. So what she does is um, they're of Jewish subjects, but they're very irreverent. So I have one that's like a Gemara um, uh, saying that something like about women with um, colored roche, you know, that, that basically that they're... Oh, you know, I think she does daf yo. I, I think she's the woman that does the daf or, or a page a week or something, and she does a paper cutting on the daf. Oh, so, okay. So I didn't know if, so I don't know that, but I have this one and it's, um, like I say, it's very irreverent, but it's amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. And I, have, I don't have it right but I don't know if I could show them. Let's see. Oh, I, I see. I don't know that's who Ploney is, but that's beautiful. Wait, is that is Marcy Weidel? Like she's, she's very recognizable. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah, I love oh, it. Jenny, I see a pretty Ani. Yeah. There's a little glare there. <clears throat> I, oh. I have one I got. I have a Nicholas Esther with a New Year's Eve card. Oh, wow. Judy, that's beautiful. Are you making this? This was a New Year's Eve card. No, I got it from my friend when I was thinking of taking the course. Actually, I had borrowed my husband's X-Acto knife a month ago thinking, oh, yeah, I've always wanted to do this. And then I saw your advertisement and then I got this card. I said, okay, this is a sign. <laughs> I'm so glad you did. But it's just a New Year's card, which I love. Oh, Janine Kay, what is that? I can't really. Oh, is that a Dina Levy over there? Of course. Yes, it is. This is just my first floor. I've got that one. I've got this one. Janine was honored many times, and the poor lady kept getting. No, Dina no, 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 no. Forget the honor. This was the, this is the treat. <laughs> 
That's a funny. Wait, I'm not looking at the second page if there's anyone showing me. Oh, there is Arlene Fruchter. Oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful. I like that. I got it in Israel. I don't know if it says who it is. A little hard to get the curves. Yeah, it does. Can't read it. Shlomo. I can't read it. Any tips on the curves, on the circular curves? Yes, let's talk about the circular curve right up here. If you're interested, you can look up for a second. I have um, using the scissor. I'm, I'm working here. Oh, using a scissors, it's going to be a little more challenging. But you start at one point. You can make the the circle bigger, or if you don't want to make a circle, people have what they've been doing is they've been making these like football shapes, like three of those inside here, which also look very nice. So if you are afraid of the circle, you can you can improvise like that. Coming home. I also have this Roseanne Chaseman. It's oh, you want to do something so interesting? Can you, is that Plony again? Yeah. I don't know your first name, sorry. Um, so somebody was selling something in Teaneck and I, I answered his ad on Teaneck Shules and he said, oh, I see you're a paper cutter. My mother from Chicago was a paper cutter. Her name was Roseanne. Rosie, oh, yeah. And I said, oh my gosh, I actually met her once when I was in Chicago. She's a very talented paper cutter. She was very. I loved her stuff. And this is, uh, it's um, on um, what, a, a fiber paper. Oh, that's the beautiful. Background. I yeah. love that. I love how it's framed with no, uh, no color after that. That's beautiful. Yeah. What was Roseanne's last name? Chaseman. Chase, yes, okay. Yeah, I think she collaborated with my father with some ketubot that he had written. Oh, wow, your father was a calligrapher? No, well, he, you know, not a professional. My father was a rabbi, a shul rabbi in Chicago. A shul. <laughs> Congregation Kehilath Jacob Beth Samuel, KJBS, emphasis on the BS, as he used to say. <laughs> <Oy>. <laughs> All you Chicagoans may know him as Frank Scholl. Oh, oh yeah. okay. <laughs> My son-in-law is from Chicago. Who's that? Um, Kapitansky, Esther and Glenn Kapitansky's oh. son. She's from Skokie. The, the name I know, probably much younger than me. <laughs> how, how are you guys doing? Let's see some paper cutting. Hold them up. Let's see. Oh, what? Holy cow. Look at this, guys. This is looking good. Okay, I'm going to hold them up at the same time. So we'll but have we like... Can't, but we're all, we're all on just your page. So I can't see anybody else's. Oh, well, I see a lot. So here, I can take a little picture here. Everyone hold theirs up. And then... Uh, anyone who wants to change it, you go on the top right. It says view. You, can, you yourself can turn to gallery view. Oh. Okay. Oh yeah, it's fun to see a lot That's of people. Smart. Oh, we're, we're learning <laughs> okay. so much. <laughs> it's it's oh, that's pretty, Risa. That's beautiful. That's that you wish a lion you have. So, Dina, I'm just conscious of people's time. Even though we're oh. happy to stay on, we're at the twelve o'clock mark. Um, time flies when you're having fun. I think everyone's agreeing. Uh, but just wanted to give you a a a, a I guess a a timeline so you know what where we're at. And Wonderful. People, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I would love to stay on until at least one person is finished so we can see what a finished piece looks like. And I see a few of you are really almost finished. Oh, De oh look at, oh, Debbie did something very interesting. If anyone sees Debbie, maybe we can pin Debbie for a second. Debbie Stern okay. Blue. Um, Debbie decided not to cut the outside. She made it, it's kind of like a window. Are we able to? Um, yeah, I'll spotlight. Oh, I can do it. Oh, yeah, you did it. Yeah. That's very cool. Oh, and Debbie made another little heart in her heart. I love that. Gorgeous. Where are you from, well, Debbie? Debbie is very talented. I'm from I'm from Englewood. And actually, Dina, I just told the story about you a little while ago. You and I were on the jitney crossing the GW Bridge to go to Port Authority. And you had, <laughs> we're looking frantically for your phone. You remember them? 
And I was sitting near you and I and you said, can you do me a favor? I don't know who you are, but can you call my phone and see if it's in here? And I called and your name came up on my phone. And I said, mm -hmm. I know you. I had, <laughs> I had uh, ordered some things for you from you when I was chairing the SAR dinner. That was crazy. That was such a fun, right. and I was on my way to the airport. So can right. you imagine? Right. I wasn't going to the city for, you know, two hours right. and coming home. I needed And, and your phone. husband went to meet you at the airport. Yeah, I you know he met me at the Jitney and then we drove oh, the right Jitney. back home and got my phone. I texted you after and said, did you get your phone? <laughs> Dina, this is your life. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. Nice to see you again, Debbie. You that too. looks beautiful. Do you have a piece of paper to put behind it? I do. I found... Oh, nice. Look how pretty that looks. I will Beautiful. show you also, since you were asking people to show, I have this. It's on my phone. I don't have the original. Can we see this? Wait. Hold on. Come on. Can you see it? I don't know if the glare is too bright. Yeah. What? That's pretty. What is that? That's better. That's my Merkin. daughter's name. Merkin. Merkin. Yeah. That's my daughter and her children's names and her names are in there. Beautiful. Yep. Oh, I, I can see it. that. Beautiful. I made Ready. that for them. Oh, you did? Oh, wow. I did. Oh, wow. Wow. Have you okay. made others? Uh, I have. I have. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Dina and Debbie need to meet together. Absolutely. I'll make it happen. I'll make it happen. Let's do exactly. it. No, I've made I've made a, a bunch of things, but I was hoping maybe I could learn some new things because you make them better than I do. So I thought I would join today <laughs> for a meet and also Thanks, Debbie. maybe yeah. I could awesome. learn something. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Anyone else have anything to so, share? So just speaking of a meet, I just really wanted to thank Connie uh, for doing the introduction, always being available to my um I guess we'd say partner in crime, Israela Khan, a fellow colleague of mine who worked on this with, uh, with a number of us, a lot of colleagues and thank, and thank the sponsors, those of you who in honor of Amit, in honor of Tupishvat, in honor of whatever um, sponsored this, uh, we're uh, very much appreciated. Um, and I, I did wanna say that I know Dean is gonna be on a bit more, um, but um, at some point, obviously, you're, I don't want to say free to go, you, you know, but uh, she's available. I'll send out, as I said, the email. Um, if you have questions and, you know, definitely take a look at her stuff. And thank you, Dina, for, for everything. Um, Shane, I wonder how Shaney's doing over there. I don't see you at the moment. Oh, Shaney, let me see what you're making. I know, I remember you majored in graphics. Is that what you do now? Unmute yourself. Let's hear you. I used to love, by the way, my kids come home from Camp Stone and say that there's a little boy pollster in their ADA. I said, I know their mom. Yep. Yeah, so I have my own invitation business, very small business. I do a little bit of that. Um, do a lot more knitting these days. Oh, nice. And, uh, you know, but I, I've never really done paper cutting, so kind of fun to do that. I'm so glad. I am so, so glad. I'm so Happy to see you. I know it's nice. It's been a while, right? <laughs> Too long. Dina, Dina right. before you um, sign off, can you just tell us how to mount them and what you know? What's the right way? Or sure, absolutely. Wait, Susan, I want to just see that. That looked very cool. You said, it was similar to what you said. There's nothing behind it. it. Yeah, that's very pretty. You can frame it between two pieces of glass, and then that. whatever color wall you have, it will match. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, so I'll, I'll talk about mounting it. Um, so what I do is, first of all, you, one mistake that you make, I guess, only once is that make sure that when you put the glue on it, you put it on the bad side because you're going to turn your piece over. Oh, is my, oh, oh, this is not, oh, sorry. I took a picture and then this never came back on. Hold on. Here we go. Um, let me pin pin myself i don't i don't see my second screen we can we could now see the um the paper cutting screen you can oh i don't know why i can't okay you could see the paper no no no, no, no i don't see it how do i do that 
Oh, okay. Is there what? Oh, there it go. There it went. Okay. You see it? I, I why don't I see it anywhere? Oh, here I see a paper cut screen. Yeah, I'm I gonna just, spotlight yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, yeah. I changed your screen name before, and yeah, now you spotlighted just you. Perfect. Okay. Thank great. you for those of us who are not good at technology. <laughs> okay, so this is the bad side. I would put like a little glue on the corners and maybe the heart and like one or two other spots. Not a lot of glue. It gets messy. It gets wrinkly. So I put some glue, either glue dots or glue stick, or I use Elmer's glue. I put it on the side and then I, I, I don't do it directly on here. I put it on somewhere else and then I take a toothpick and I put the toothpick really very daint daintily. Then I turn it over and I hold it down and sometimes I'll put a book on top of it. You know, not for too long, but to make it flat. Good. Yep. Yeah, feel free to ask questions. This is now open. You know, the, you're a yeah. A we great, have a, a great a few more minutes. A few people yeah. finished, and then I want to take a group picture. You know, when you're as you're doing more cuts, it's obviously much more delicate. Is there any tips so that you don't accidentally tear something while you're moving the paper, or is it just be careful? No, you just be careful. I tend to do the smaller pieces first. Because if you do the very big pieces, then it gets a little shaky. So I would do the small, if there's a big difference on this piece, it doesn't really matter. But on some pieces, when there's a lot of very small cuts to do, I would do that first. I would think a glue stick would work better, no? Um, yeah, glue stick is great. A glue Smoother, stick. flatter. Yeah, that's true. Very true. Adina, does it pay to start on the inside? Because I see now I'm, I did a lot of the outside, but the inside's a little bit harder to hold on to. Yeah, some 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 people think that's the good Torah. You know, it it depends. <laughs> okay. It depends. Oh, Debbie Schumann, where are you where are you calling in from today? St. Louis. Englewood too. St. Louis. Oh, St. Louis. Do you know my father was the rabbi in St. I, Louis in 1970, a traditional synagogue? I sure do. And I only realized who you were when you showed the picture of him at the end. <laughs> I said, oh my gosh, that's Rabbi Weiss. And of course, he was my teacher um, at Stern as well. So. Oh, that's so funny. Why is my name? My uncle Kedisha. was the rabbi in St. Louis at uh, Tepharis Israel Chavar Kadisha for many years. Rabbi Poland. Yep. You look like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I remember Wait, you. Kenny, who I, Kenny was in uh, my class. Wait, who am I speaking to? <laughs> Debbie Fredman. Oh, wait, I met you in Shul once. Oh, Fredman, so, right? you're all St. Louis. We're all St. Louis. We're all, all over, yes. Yeah. I, 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 I'm I, friends with G Gitty. I From uh, Milwaukee, Minneapolis? Yeah, I, I do these women's trips to Israel. She's very involved with okay. me. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, you're, who's you're... holding up their picture with some color behind it? Debbie Friedman, your daughter lives in Englewood, right? Yes, my daughter Aviva, yes. Yes, I remember meeting oh, her God, and that's how I met you. Okay, yes. Uh, Judy, come on, hold them up, let's see. Anyone Ooh. with your screen off who wants to join our picture is welcome to join our picture as well. I hope all of you who still have your screen off are still having fun. Debbie Schumann, she beat you woman. What? Debbie Schumann, she, she shouldn't be Debbie Schumann. She should be Debbie Schumann. Of course, <laughs> yes. Today, that would be. Tell, tell us Jenny Nadal, come on, Debbie. Sharon, Audrey, put your stuff up. Let's see it. A lot of Debbie's out here. Paula, Rochelle, Verstende. Everyone tell us your... when we can put our pictures down. Wait, uh, well, everyone should do it at the same time, but. I'm so not done. All right, well, it's looking good. Let's see the second people. That's looking good. That is looking good. This was fabulous. Okay, okay, so anyone here having a good time, give me a thumbs up. And anyone who wants to, uh, who wants more 
designs. It's really like a fun thing to do, especially yes, in time when you're stuck at home a little more than you're used to. And I was looking for something new to pick up. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. Yes. Oh, Shaney, that looks good. And Michelle, that looks good. Fun. Oh, that nice paper, Shaney. You must have some pretty paper there. I couldn't find any construction paper, which I know I have buried somewhere since my kids moved out. But luckily I have many neighbors with small children. So I got some construction paper from them. Some people, <laughs> someone just showed me they did it on um, wrapping paper, which also came out pretty. Oh, that's You could be creative. The truth is people in some classes, they, they did it like with different colors, like behind this one color, behind this another color. I'll show you what one of my daughters made long ago and I always wanted to hang it up. Of course I can't find it now, hold on. Oh, I lost the screen. Oh, there. Your paper cut screen went dark. Oh, it might be me. Oh, you know why? Because I put my phone down. Oh. <laughs> Dina, did your kids go to the to uh, Frisch? Yeah, uh, yeah, some of them. Oh, okay. That's why you look familiar to me, I think. Who's that? Judy Kirshner. Oh. Uh, my, I'm Judy my Frank. Are 22, 24, and 26. Okay, so I have 20. Oh, so maybe the 24 year old. What's your 24 year old's name? Shira Levy, and I have Italia Levy. Shira Levy, Natalia Levy. What, well, what's 20... your child's name? Jonathan Kirshner, he's 24. Um, and the other kids are all older. But I've seen you, I either saw you at Frisch Things or at the Children of Chernobyl dinner, which we used to go to regularly. Okay, I can't find my butterfly, but... Um, anyway, I have done things where b behind each thing is different. It's so bizarre, it's always here. You know, you can put different colors behind different things, kind of like the layering, and it makes it look pretty. Um, all right. Are we good? Everybody's happy? Fantastic. I, well, I really want to thank uh, Janine for inviting me. And Israel, I don't see you at the moment. And Connie. Oh, there you are. Sorry. Uh, for having me. It was so nice meeting all of you. And uh, and re-meeting some of you, although I see I see some of you um, who don't turn on your screens, uh, who I know also. Hmm. A shout out to Shirley Schuster. I don't know if you're even listening, but I thank God I've done many paper cuttings for Shirley and her wonderful organization. I'm listening. I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> did you see? Did you see? Hi, I Shirley. had one of your. In my, did you see my slideshow? I had Rabbi. I uh, did. Rabbi I saw everything. I was watching everything. Okay. How many people uh, are in this group, this workshop? 37. No, there were no, 40, that 40, was, was 44. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and um, there were more, yeah. There's, and hi, a, and a shout out to Karen Billet, who I also don't see. I don't know if you're- Hi, uh, Dina. Yeah. <laughs> are you making something pretty? Yeah. No, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that talented. I'm just not. Uh, <laughs> How many people from from Israel? About, I think four registered from Israel. Yeah, four or five. Four. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's awesome. This was a great time of day, and it's great that it was Martin Luther King Day, Janine. This was a really yeah. smart idea. Right. Yeah. yeah, and look, if we were to do it, you know, one of the advantages, slight the advantage of COVID of what, what yeah. the position we're in is that we all could come together and do this together oh, and uh, we can continue to practice and get better, but I am never going to, um, uh, I, I, Dina, you still have got plenty of business on my end because <laughs> this is not uh, I'm so busy. I can use some help, but now I've been yes. zooming. I think this is like my 35th zoom and wow. thank God. And it's fun. You, you meet people from all over. I used to do these women's trips to Israel all the time. And when I'd come back, I'd say, Oh, I wish I can go to Texas. You know, th these people yep. are on my bus. I wish I can go to California. Well, now I've been zooming all of them. So that, yeah, and I'm happy to see most everybody who had emailed with any issue is on, so that's wonderful, but um, that's great. And uh, I think 
uh, at this point, I think we, we, the teacher has taught, you've taught us to fish, not just the fish itself. We didn't eat. So I, th I think we're good, but um, Dina, that's your call. Um, I think many of us, I could stay on for another, it's probably going to take me another hour to finish this. But um, I think at this point, we'll wish everyone a wonderful day, a wonderful week. Uh, and uh, at least we've picked up a new hobby to keep us busy. And um, hopefully we'll all be able to get together in person uh, someday soon. Have a wonderful day. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank it you. was so fantastic. Much.